what's up guys, Benny here and welcome to another episode of Benny's Bootcamp where we're checking out an insane 41 kill solo gameplay. This isn't in duos, this isn't in trios, this isn't quads, this is solos which makes this gameplay incredibly impressive and it is of course once again by one of the best players in the world, Aiden, whose world record we checked out the other week. So I wanted to see how he approached this because I think solos is one of the most challenging modes partially because of the way the game plays out because every single location is usually taken up by a player whether it's a building whether it's like a power position on the top of a hill there's so much stuff that goes into getting a high kill gameplay in solos and he of course starts off in Superstore and we just see him clear up a little bit I want to kind of show this a bit because this is something that you need to be thinking about to improve your own gameplay when you're playing modes like solos so when you go into Superstore also if you are new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button as 75% of you watching are not subscribed and I promise if you subscribe you'll get better at Warzone but he goes in like one, one of the big things well if you're in Superstore I really recommend using an SMG it's going to give you that mobility so you can scan around and move um, and pick stuff up now something that Aiden does really well is he listens to the sound to kind of read the situations and also doesn't overstretch himself you'll notice most of the time that he gets into a gunfight he's always got an out so if he starts losing that gunfight he can get out, reposition, and then re-engage in a better place. Now, there he goes into pre-firing because he's heard the enemy player. He knows he's around that position. He just didn't realize he was one floor higher up. So once again, goes out, but then disengages. This is the thing that is really impressive. Disengages. Doesn't go the whole way down. He's giving himself as many options here. So if we just quickly go back, this is what you need to be doing. He gives himself a load of options. So he stays here. So if the person drops down um, and tries to push him from the bottom, he can go up and survive. He doesn't put himself in a place where he's stuck so this position here if he then goes back up once he gets his plates on he can re-challenge sees the second fight going on so he can chase this guy knows this guy's gonna be weird it's gonna be an easy kill but also knows the fight was going up on top now sadly because there isn't a kill feed doesn't know if he got that that person got the kill uh but that so heads across over to burger town opposite and picks up a really nice kill solos one of the biggest things that you can do is have good sound. So make sure you're wearing a headset. Like I use Turtle Beach Atlases or Stealth 700s, incredible headsets for my partners at Turtle Beach. There is a link to them down in the description as well. But if you're going for a high kill game, uh, one of the things that Aiden does in every single high kill game of his is use a vehicle to get around, especially in solos. If you stay in one place, you're not going to be able to get as many kills because they just, they're just not going to come to you. Once you clear an area, you've kind of emptied that part of the map. And unless you, like you, you'll mainly see this if you get three UAVs in where you see how spread out the lobbies get. But he goes back into Superstore again because early game, normally, if you kill a few people in solos, they'll traditionally go back to where they died from. So you can kind of get two waves of enemies. And Superstore, as we all know, is the hot spot. Also, right, you might have seen this. It was like one single frame. Aiden knows where this guy is, right? If we just go through this, just by frame by frame, right? And like, see if which of you can spot this. But if we go through, right, have you seen this? There is a yellow dot right here on the flashbang, right? Hold on. There was a yellow dot. Now that is because the watch from Halloween for some reason can still be seen through walls. So don't go ahead and use that watch if you've got it. It will get you killed. I've killed so many people, whether it's in the gulag, whether it's around the map, because they're wearing that watch. I'm like, I've got wall hacks. Just don't use it. Use the vehicle now to push silos, different part of the map. Um, Solo, traditionally, you get a lot less uh, money, which is the reason why Aiden is also using the heartbeat sensor because he can then see players inside of buildings and stuff like that rather than having to rely on... Because you don't get as many UAVs compared to squads because you're not finishing as many bounties off. Um, he's still got his bounty here, which he's got 50 seconds on. Seen the guy on the heartbeat here, uses that R9 shotgun and gets taken out. This is the downside with the R9. Now, if you do misfire you do get taken down. So what he does here is he engages, jumps round, misses the first, like a lot of the pellets there. If you notice, he was firing to the left-hand side, so gets sent to the gulag. But it, it's okay. And beaten by the org as well, a ground loot org. That guy was, uh, was, was really, it's like Christmas come early. Um, 
I don't personally like, let me know down in the comments as well. What do you guys think about the marksman rifles and snipers in the Gulag? I personally don't like them. I prefer like the pistols and the SMGs. Goes back to his body and uh, the guy's gone and stolen his R9 shotgun. Simple revenge here. Gets hit. Oh, hold on. How's he going to play this? Once again, holding the power position here. It's a really good play. That guy there, like Aiden knows he has the R9 shotgun because he has his loot. Um, and it also goes back to what I said. People always go back to where they get killed. They either want revenge on the person that killed him uh, or to get their own guns back. Shoots through the door there. Listening for the sound here, which is really important. Okay, has hit the guy closed the door aggressively pushes one of the biggest tips i can give you guys as well when you go to push through a door especially in like a top of a building don't just like peek through it aggressively push it sees the door close jumps through means the person's getting you're, you're a bit less like um what's the word that i'm looking for you're less predictable i think is the best way of doing it straight away nice easy hold with the with using the kilo there he's on 15 kills with 50 people left and he's gonna drop 41 in this gameplay uh <laughs> oh dear oh dear i hate riot shields and what is it okay that guy was terrible terrible but he's been hit by a stun grenade so he could potentially get pushed here doesn't get pushed goes back to the vehicle doesn't have his perks there got gets lucky once again he's coming up against some players that aren't particularly great if he if that was a better player once again there was a big opening there to take to take him out but still impressive to get a 41 kill game regardless i really like that bit of play there from aiden so what he did there where he saw the sniper again looking at him and to make himself as hard to hit whilst in the vehicle as possible he just did like a little wiggle like just to kind of show it off a bit pushes the building with the uh with the r9 shotgun there as you'd expect gets shot once again switches to the r9 Nice, easy kill. Like, they, these are the sort of situations that you always want to get yourself in. Um, is when you're using your R9 shotgun or you get out of a vehicle, make sure you've got your close range weapon in and just be quick, very, very quick in those kind of movements. Okay. All right, pushes in, using the R9 again. Everyone's got riot shields. I've never seen so many riot shields. Really nice back to back kill. Also, when you know when you get down in solos, you know they've got a self res. So just kind of be, you want to play really aggressive when you do that. So either push them with your close range weapon, get a grenade off or whatever you can. It's very unfortunate that knows a player's location. Now, if you're trying to get high kill games in solos, when you find an enemy's position, you need to play really aggressive because, of course, the people are spread out. Use that heartbeat sensor as well. If they've come back from the gulag and you've seen them use their shoot, you know they're going to be on your heartbeat, so you can rely on it. Um, still, when you're pushing buildings, don't be 100% certain on it. It's why pairing it with audio is key if you want to be successful and it's what aiden does so well he's why he's able to push enemies so quickly and so aggressively and what is impressive about this as well this isn't buyback solos where if you've got cash you come straight back in it's regular solos you've got your gulag um so lobbies can die out pretty quick and getting a large amount of kills is very difficult and the vehicle is it's so important to that like you'll notice that so much like he just wait 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 Oh, I feel so bad for this death. Right, jumps out of the vehicle, gets a fire shotgun, and somehow the car crushes him. This like goes into side. That's that's that's. I'm not gonna lie, that is very very unfortunate. Um, doesn't somehow doesn't run him over. Nice little slide there. Something else I'd really recommend adding to your game. Um, just get into the habits. Why with my elite controller actually? If I quickly just grab it, it's why I have a paddle on the back um program to slide just so whenever i'm in a gunfight i can add a slide in or a jump shot the other paddles jump um just so i can really mix up the engagements that i'm in so it's a lot harder for enemies to beat me in a gunfight as i'm less predictable once again this is just showing how powerful the r9 shotgun is there's very few guns that can stand up against it if you do go up against an r9 you really want to keep those gunfights at a little bit of a distance even if you've got the mp5 just like keep it a little bit further like further range at around 10 meters and you're going to beat the uh, R9 every single time. It's the second you get inside of buildings that you're in trouble. Like you see this here. It doesn't even matter that he's lost a load of health. Nearly goes down to the uh, proximity mines there, but the R9 just decimates. Using the vehicle, like this is how he's got so many kills. Using the vehicles all the time. Beautiful gameplay. All right. 
While he's putting his plates there, he's very clever. He's just scanning the air, trying to see opponents, listen for gunshots as well. Challenger's always jump shotting when he's doing that. If you're in a gunfight as well and you've got like a side shot, throw in a crouch there and you're going to be able to snap onto your opponents a lot easier and you're going to be a lot more accurate. But when you're like in a one-on-one -on -one and they're shooting at you, jump shot, slide, whatever you can to make yourself as hard to hit. Um, don't Just don't be static. Here's the self res there. Guy didn't move, able to finish him off with that Semtex, which is really, really nice. Once again, back in the armored truck, able to move around. Something else as well that a lot of players don't think about, and it's something that I'd like to point out here, is play around buy stations. If you're looking for players in solos, most people will always be going to or around buy stations because they want to spend their cash, whether that's getting their self res, whether they want to get UAVs, airstrikes. Um, so if you're struggling to find people, just hang around like and control areas of the map that buy stations are in, and you'll get a lot of kills as well. And I don't know why, but with Aiden, there always seems to be a juggernaut at endgame. I cannot wait for season one where hopefully juggernauts go into the bin and get replaced by some other kill streak because they just don't belong in a battle royale. I just think I f I'm feeling very strongly about this because there is no way someone should be able to have a juggernaut and get in a vehicle. If you're going to have juggernauts, don't let them get in vehicles. Maybe they can stand in the back of an armored truck. But if they sat in a car, or a Jeep, or an ATV, that thing would just scrape along the floor. And also, in that armor, I don't think they'd fit in a seat, just personally. Um, but once again, so important. There's seven people left up right here, uh, including Aiden. So six kills available, 42 kill max, and that jug. You want to stay as far away from the jug as possible, um, just because that's what everyone else is going to do as well. Gets very... Unf Ooh, this is, this is risky. Gets, gets downed. Jug's getting pushed. The guy has not finished the kill. Got very, very lucky here. And it's why it's very important to get your self reses in solos as well. A, like sometimes people don't get that finish off, especially if you get downed at a distance by an assault rifle. You can get it off and you can fight to live another day. Use the fire shotgun inside of buildings. What I really love about Aiden's gameplay, actually, is just look at the centering of where he's when he's moving around the map. Like, just look at his crosshairs. It's always really sharp onto the corner where the enemy is mo going to appear so he can react the fastest and land the shots. As soon as he goes around, check in the corner. Straight away, easy kill. Make sure you're always aiming. Whenever you're moving around a building, you should always be, like, aiming at the corner so if someone does appear, you can snap onto him, get your shots off as quickly as possible. And once again, goes down to positioning. He's got the high ground here. He's able to get shots off. Knows that person's got the self res, so he's going to play super aggressive here. Doesn't have a Semtex, so he's having to get a wide angle to finish off the kill. And then he can go back. And then there's a number of jump shots, that, like, like right here, right? There's a cut here. But what he does to be able to get the high ground back again, which is very, very important, there are little jump spots. Like, he jumps onto there to climb up onto the roof. Um, learn the jump spots. Really going to help you out. That guy's got the high ground. Once again, does not have a Semtex, so he's going to have to just hold this a pre-aim. Knows the other guy is a juggernaut. He's got him marked on the map, so he knows exactly where he is, so he doesn't get caught out by him getting an angle, because if a juggernaut starts spraying at you in a minigun, not much you can do. Holding this guy on the gas. The only way that guy was going to survive was I'd jump out the back or go down the ladder. Um, but once again, power position is so important in solos, especially in those final circles. Looking around now, spotting for the last person. Always wants, wants to deal with the final person before dealing with the jug so you can play the map a little bit more without the fear of being shot in the back. That UAV's helped. Beautiful play. So this one thing you have to do if you're using the R9, you know it's only gonna it's only effective at close range. Sees the person in the gap right there. Knows that's too far a distance for him to jump through and push the guy and get the shots off and get the kill with the R9. So switches to the kilo. Nice little jump shot. Easy kill. Uh, and he's also got a nice... Uh, he's, oh, it's a, it's a turret. I bet he was hoping for an airstrike there. But here, really important. This is the only way you can take a jug now. Using that R9. Knows he's got to play the mobility here. So gets those shots off. Let's the burn damage do. Waits for the spin shots to go, like die down. Once again, using audio. So he knows and challenge. Nearly gets caught out there. So he repositions. Because like, you don't want to get in a position. If you get pre-aimed, pre-fired, you're going to die here. Get shots off. Gets caught out. Uses the gas now with the gas mask so he can get a different angle. So he's got a chance of killing this jug. Gets the head glitch. And here is able to pick up the kill for the 41 kill dub. Every single time, it seems to be as if he just goes for the, the juggernaut as the final boss battle to get some kind of world record. Uh, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. 41 kills in solos. It's absolutely insane. Subscribe if you're new. And also, I'll leave with you. I'll leave you with Aiden's celebration. Go. Let's go, bro. Let's. Oh my God, bro.